their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. and their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their cold war. Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path and grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the U.S. with a plan in mind, and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Salase, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything, nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore, and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally, Ocelot and I planned to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, also known as Signet, to death and made it look like an accident. The Shadow Moses incident. With Paramedic and Sigint dead, Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. 
Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then, someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend. That would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. This is his pix, his holy ark. His body is alive, but his consciousness is locked away by nanomachines. So technically speaking, he's not really brain dead. We can't allow Liquid to inherit the same sins that corrupted Zero. Manipulating people's minds for the sake of his own ego. Snake, it's Naomi. What happened? She's gone. She's not in the Nomad anymore. When? Less than an hour ago. She disappeared right after she and Sonny got back from Dr. Madnar's place. Why weren't you watching her? I... Uh, I didn't have my glasses on. Naomi said it herself. The experiment can't succeed without her. You think she went back to Liquid? <sighs> what about Bryden? Good news on that front. We managed to get our hands on a dialysis machine and set up an ICU. We just started him on dialysis and treatment for his wounds. Will he live? Yeah, no worries there. Sonny's taken over for Naomi. But his treatment's probably gonna take 48 hours. Until then, Raiden can't move. Hey you! Come here! Uh. Uh. <laughs> that would scare the shit out of me too. I'm surprised how Snake that? saw the motherfucker and didn't do a damn thing about it. Ready. Yes, ma'am. 
We'll escape through the canal route using the real van. Get it ready. Hurry. Yes, ma'am. Snake, over here. We've got decoy vans set to draw some of our pursuers away. Everything is epic in this game. It's the same bike from another ESO 3. All of these children were orphans. They work in arms factories. And when they grow up, they want to join a PMC. They seek revenge on other companies, PMCs that killed their parents, and use their earnings to support their younger siblings. There are countless child soldiers like these in the PMCs. Nowadays, anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. Of course, it's all just virtual training. It's so easy for them to get absorbed by these war games. And before they know it, they're in the PMCs holding real guns. These kids end up fighting in proxy wars that have nothing to do with their own lives. They think it's cool to fight like this. They think that combat is life. They don't need a reason to fight. After all, for them, it's only a game. Zero is the cause of all this. Defeating Liquid won't change things. Unless we stop the Patriot system, the cycle will go unbroken. Hop on. Hold on to me. Watch those hands, Snake. That's your mother. Don't you get perky on me. With so many wars being waged, oil and biofuel have become as precious as diamonds. It's been a while since I went out for a ride. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or fall dead. Big Mama. Call me Eva. Oh, boy. 